We got an interesting topic to talk about today and I wanna hear your thoughts about it, so make sure you comment down below. And what I wanna talk about is Elon Musk and of course, people like Elon. Now the latest news about Elon is that he's stepping out of the Twitter deal, which in my opinion, you know, I think this whole thing is really stupid and that's not a novel opinion or anything because I'm sure everyone thinks this is really stupid. I love jokes more than anyone, but this was just a waste of time. But the interesting thing that we could look at is why Elon even did this or why he thinks he can get away with it. Now, you know, I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk, but one thing about him is that he does think he's above the law. So the question is, is that okay or does someone like him need to be punished? Now, at first glance, you could say, of course, someone like that needs to be punished because no one's above the law. But let's take a step back and look at another example of Travis Kalanick, the CEO of Uber back in the day. He's another bad boy of tech, if you could call him that. He's got a whole drama show about him now, right, from JGL? But anyway, you probably heard about the Uber files that leaked recently. And I don't know why this is a big deal because everyone already knew all these things about Uber. But a leaked trove of confidential files has revealed the inside story of how the tech giant Uber flouted laws, duped police, exploited violence against drivers, and secretly lobbied governments during its aggressive global expansion. And this is all coming from Stratechery from Ben Thompson. So we all know the story about Uber. They were very aggressive to make Uber happen. And that meant bending and breaking laws. They were constantly playing in a gray area. So you could say Travis thought he was above the law. So on the one hand, yeah, he did illegal things. But on the other hand, we're all actually better off for it. Because here's the thing, before Uber was available and before we had ride sharing, all we had was cabs. And cabs at that time were absolutely terrible. And that's why ride sharing became a thing. It was really tough to get a cab, and once you got a cab, you couldn't even use your credit card to pay. Cabs would rip you off a lot of times. That happened to me once. It was just a mess. But once they had that competition from these ride-sharing apps, that's when cabs got a lot better. And if you use cabs today, oftentimes they're actually better than Uber. They're more convenient. They're even cheaper. See, back in 2015, data actually showed that cab complaints in New York and Chicago meaningfully declined after Uber entered the market, which makes sense, right? As soon as cabs finally had to compete with someone, their service went up and by a lot. And now because of what Travis and Uber did, because of those laws that they broke, us consumers have a much, much better product. We have good cabs and good ride sharing. And the reason that Uber had to break and bend so many laws is because there was so much regulation in place. And we know as certain industries get older and older, like for example, cabs, there's more and more regulation. And what does regulation do? Well, on the good side, it keeps people safe, of course, but on the bad side, it stifles innovation. So you could probably say there would be no Uber if they didn't break those laws, meaning we would be dealing with the same terrible cabs that we had before all of this happened. And that was Uber Uber's end goal, right, with all the shady stuff that they did? They wanted to build a constituency of riders and drivers who would pressure local politicians to change laws. And they were dealing with a bunch of fierce pushback from incumbents. Incumbents are always a problem. When big companies get to be big companies, what they do is put a bunch of regulation in place by lobbying so that no competitors can come up and do anything better. They lock themselves in, they build that moat, and then us consumers suffer. So for a company like Uber to exist, they somehow had to break through that regulation. And Uber by and large succeeded in what they did, right? Ride sharing is legal almost everywhere now. And airports and arenas have been redesigned to accommodate these services. And then of course, like we already said, cabs are much better as well. And it's weird to think back now that Uber and ride sharing was banned in some cities, right? Or that it was banned at airports. What was the reason for that? It was always a BS reason because what it really was, was the incumbents forcing those politicians to do that. And not forcing, but you know, just paying or all those backdoor deals. Politics is terrible, we all know that. Now what happened to Travis after this was all said and done? Well, he was thrown out of Uber, the company he started, and now he really does not have a good reputation. And that's where you get into this hero paradox. Because someone like Travis uses the wrong means trying to get to good ends. So it's weird because our society kind of depends on someone breaking the rules and forcing through something better. Our society also finds it essential to hold them accountable for their actions. So Travis and Uber broke a bunch of rules and they gave us something amazing, but they still broke those rules that we put together. So they have to suffer the consequences of that, right? I don't know. That's why I want to hear your thoughts about it in the comments. What do you do here? Because we know too much regulation is bad. See, so many industries around us seem super stagnant, right? And a large part of that is because it's impossible to get anything done. The one counter example of all our industries is tech. 
And what's the defining characteristic of tech? See, the relationship between the massive increase in wealth and even greater gain in consumer welfare produced by tech companies since the dawn of the internet may in fact be related to the fact that there hasn't been any major regulation. Now, of course, you can't say that the lack of regulation is causal, but we can be skeptical that we would have had more growth with more regulation, because when does that ever happen? More broadly, tech seems like the only area where innovation and building is happening anywhere in the West. And this isn't to deny that these big tech companies aren't sometimes bad actors like uh, Facebook and that platforms do in theory need regulation because yeah they really do but given how slow everything is and really it's at a standstill and everywhere but tech it's probably smart to be skeptical about new regulation so you know I'm one of those people who complain about all our smart people just going into tech to make more apps but if you look at it from this perspective where else can they go where they could actually make something? If you're gonna be stopped by regulation everywhere you turn, then why are you gonna go into those industries? One thing that comes up is nuclear power. That's so important for us to progress, but it's completely stopped by regulation. Bill Gates tried to do it, couldn't do it. So this brings us back to Elon once again. So like I said, this whole Elon Twitter thing, very stupid. I don't know why he did it, but he doesn't look good coming out of it. And maybe he did it because he is just so unconcerned with law and the contract he signed. He just really didn't care. And and the thing about this case is that it's going to go to Delaware courts. And here's what's interesting, because Elon thinks he's above the law, he might actually be above the law, as you'll see in this example. So on the one hand, it will certainly annoy a Delaware chancellor, because Delaware likes to think of itself as a stable place for corporate deals with predictable law and binding contracts, and obviously what Musk is doing undermines that. So on the one hand, you know the courts are going to want to put Musk in his place. But on the other hand, it might actually intimidate a Delaware chancellor, because what if the court orders Musk to close the deal for Twitter, and he just says no. Like, what are they going to do? They're not going to put him in chancery jail. Elon is pretty contemptuous of legal authority, and he thinks he's above the law, and he may actually be right. A showdown between Musk and a judge may undermine the Delaware corporate law more than letting him weasel out of the deal would. So obviously, we know Elon is smart, and the way he's playing his cards, he might get away with this whole Twitter thing. Again, stupid, because why is he wasting his time with this? I don't know. So Musk, of course, is a great example of this hero paradox as well, because what he's doing with Twitter is clearly bad, but it's not the first time he He's operated above the law. We all know all the statements that he makes on Twitter that a lot of people would consider fraud when it comes to his companies. The way he manipulates stock prices. Is it manipulation? Maybe. But even so, these same tactics are what got us Tesla, right? And Tesla is real. And their effects go far beyond just their company, right? They have ushered in the new era of electric vehicles. SpaceX, which is even a bigger deal. Not simply in terms of possibilities for space exploration, but it's also a critical factor in the U.S. national defense. And if you see how Musk got both of those companies off the ground, it was by doing these same things. Companies like Tesla and SpaceX wouldn't exist if he had to play by the rules and play nice. And yet, we are better off for both of them existing. But at the same time, at what point does society decide that breaking the rules has gone too far? Musk seems determined to find out exactly where that line is. And it's funny because even on our own team, Alex, who manages the Macaros portfolio, he's always trying to short Tesla. Because he thinks it's just a ticking time bomb and that there's a lot of fraud in the way they report their financials. I always tell him, don't go against Elon Musk. It's not going to work. And he knows that, but he can't help himself. But that's just another example. Like, what is Elon doing in those financials? What was he doing when he combined all his companies, like Solar City with Tesla and then giving loans to SpaceX or whatever that whole debacle was? We're all benefiting from the result, but when we look back, is Elon going to end up in jail? And should we put him there or should he get a pass? Because he seems to be like one of the only people innovating, right? Let me know your thoughts down below. And after that, make sure you watch this video about how we just hit an information information overload in the stock market and what you can do to protect yourself from suffering the consequences of that. So comment down below on your thoughts on this video and then click this video right here and I will see you there.